everyone and welcome back to another youtube video so this video is an updated q a and a get ready with me so let's get straight into it so i'm going to start off by carving my eyebrows out and i don't know what kind of look i'm going for yet i'm just like going along with everything i'm thinking of doing like a soft glam red lip i don't know something like that um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and carve out my eyebrows and i'll because it's a q a i'll just link what i used in the um caption or else we'll literally be here all day if i was to go through everything let's jump straight into the first video first video let's jump straight into the first question which is were you i'm not going in any particular order so everything might be in a bit of a jumble like all the questions the first question is how old were you when you got into makeup and fashion with makeup i would say i got into makeup oh my god this is so hard to do when you're doing your eyebrows <laughs> let me just carve out my eyebrows and then i'll be back because we'll be here all day first got into makeup i was probably like in year seven i started wearing eyeliner and mascara at that age and then i proper i properly started wearing like foundation and concealer not like the whole shebang in like in year 10 i think at the end of year 10 only for eid and stuff only for occasions i only wore it for occasions i never really wore it to school i think the most i'd wear to school is literally concealer um, and that was in year 11 as well when i started wearing like a full base and like full face it was at the end of year 11 i did my own prom makeup slowly but surely like wore a bit more makeup mainly in year 11 well not in year 11 but at the end of year 11 and then X form came around i would say year 11 is the year where i really got into makeup because me and my friend she knows who she is like we'd literally be awake till god knows what time just putting on eyeshadow like practicing eyeshadow i don't even know why like we just used to be like awake till daft hours just like doing an eyeshadow look um and i think in year 11 was was the year where i watched a lot of makeup tutorials as well and like just makeup in general that's the year that i watched a lot of it and then it just progressed from there and then sixth form came and i've always like wanted to do like my own makeup page but i just you know when you just need that extra push to actually do it um my friends were like oh yeah just do it whatever whatever and i was like do you know what i might as well like why not if it does well then it does well and if it doesn't it doesn't and alhamdulillah like here i am that's when i got into makeup but do you know what as the years have gone by i've not like been as into makeup as i once was i don't know why that is but yeah i had more love for makeup before than i do now and then for fashion for fashion i only got into that this year like i wasn't too fussed about fashion but this year like i was like do you know what i need to step up my game what else can i like you know what else can i do to i guess make myself look better i don't know um so i thought do you know what let's get into fashion the next question is what made you decide to be in social media i guess that kind of ties in with my last question it's literally because i enjoyed makeup and yeah i didn't expect myself to get to where i am right now no way in a million years would i have thought like i would get have you ever been recognized in public as an influencer so do you know what it's happened a lot this year um it's so weird because <laughs> um i'll just like be about and then um if someone recognizes me like they'll stare at me and then i'll just look at them and either i'll glance at them or if i like proper notice them then i'll smile back and then and then they'll come up and be like oh are you um rahima from instagram or whatever are you that anywhere on instagram and then like i get so like like i just kind of freeze because i don't know what to say um because it's so weird like just being noticed 
I don't know I'm still not used to it it's so lovely meeting you guys though but it's so so severe and I do get like a few DMs and they're like oh yeah I seen you here guys honestly don't be afraid to come up to me like I'm really if I do say so myself I'm really nice I'm not like a mean person or anything like that but literally just come up to me and just say hi I'll say hi back have a little chat with you friends you make in college or sixth form stay with you i think this just depends like it varies from person to person um because obviously there'll be some people that didn't like take the friends from college and sixth form but there'll also be people where all their friends are from like sixth form or something it really does depend on your friendship group and like how close you are to your people literally the answer is literally just it varies from person to person really the next question is how do you cut off fake friends i feel like because you have that emotional attachment it's more easier said than done but it's not as difficult as you think it is obviously if they're being a fake friend why would you want to keep them in your life there's literally no point in keeping them in your life cut them off if you want to like speak to them about it speak to them about it because you never know at the end of the day they might be doing something that they don't realize that they're doing and obviously once you've spoken to them about it and they still don't fix up on what they've done then i would say cut them off because what is the point of being friends with fake people if they really valued you and valued your friendship then either they wouldn't do it in the first place or they'll take in what you told them and act on it and improve themselves but if they're not going to do that then there's plenty more friends in the sea friends there's plenty more fishes in the sea but we're going to use it in a friend's term there's so many more people that you'll come across in your life so don't just settle down with people that aren't going to treat you the way you want to be treated i feel like there's a lot of people that preach about you know just fake friends and this and that and blah 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 when really like i don't know about you guys they're the ones that are the fake ones but yet they're the ones preaching that same line and it's like just pick and choose what you want to be and what you're going to say. I don't know. Some people are actually just done out here. And you know what? Everyone has their fair share of fake friends. I don't think there's even been a person that hasn't come across a fake friend. I think it just hurts. Especially, like, it hurts more, especially when you were close to them. You created that bond. But do you know what? At the end of the day, there's just not everyone is going to be like you not everyone will have the same morals same values as you and it's just something you're just gonna have to accept going on to the topic of marriage now i'm doing my eyeliner so i have to concentrate for this so i'll be right back popped on some eyeliner and some lashes as well while i was gone so marriage one of the questions was what age would i want to get married at and you know what before when i was a bit more younger i literally said i wanted to be engaged at, i don't know like find someone by 21 and then get married at 23 um that was my younger plan now the maximum time i'd wait to get married is 24 and then the minimum is now not now actually the minimum is probably 21 if i could get married now i would but it's not really in my best interest to get married now purely because of studies and just financial stability and stuff like that i want to have my own money um obviously have a job um all of that earn a bit for a for a year or so and then but i'd say minimum 21 minimum 21 so right now i'm 20 for those that don't know am i with anyone at the moment nope nope a big big no a big no because men are what men are what men are trash no i'm joking not all of them are trash but still they're still trash i don't know about you guys but tiktok tiktok is a killer you see all these couples like people getting married and couple posts and couple video here you are just in bed binge eating single i have nothing to do not nothing to do but you just like it just 
do you know how what's it called when you when you get like baby fever it's like marriage fever or husband fever it's like that it's so annoying but be patient you gotta be patient good things come to those who wait and inshallah we will all get um the spouses that we deserve and they will come at a right time maybe right now is not a right time for us but inshallah one day How would you find it best looking for a future spouse it's so hard finding decent people best thing is don't look don't look because it will come to you when allah wills it will come to you that's the best way if you really want to get married then maybe go through a range um and i feel like people have a lot of like misconceptions about arranged marriages i don't think they're bad at all you are literally choosing the person all it is is that your parents are just helping like bring people to you and then you go out looking for them don't look for someone let them come to you like at the end of the day they've been written for you so whenever allah wills for them to come into your life they'll come into your life whether it's now whether it's in a year's time five years time ten years time um you just gotta be patient really and with having tiktok around it doesn't help that much either like it makes you feel even more impatient like you just want them to be here already but these are the years where you'll be single you'll have no like not responsibilities like no strings attached i guess like you can just do whatever you want without having to tell someone what you're doing or this and that and blah 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 this is your time this is the only time that you'll get to be fully alone with no one on your back so just make the most out of it because next thing you know you're coughed and then you wish you were single again and this and that it's hard it's hard this also leads me to my next point don't ever settle don't ever lower your standards for a person ever and i feel like this mainly goes out for the girls but even for guys as well don't ever settle or lower your standards you know what you deserve to get you know how you should be treated if someone's not treating you the way you want to be treated then dash them dash them in the bin and just go live your best life and the right person will come to you never ever 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 settle it's very easy for girls or just people in general to get like to get swallowed up in things that are the bare minimum but that's literally the bare minimum you need someone that will go literally to the moon and back someone that will literally sacrifice so much for you that is what you want you don't want someone that will literally do the bare minimum for you because there's there's nothing special in that and it's not do you know what i mean there's just nothing special in that Ah, the topic of marriage and love and relationships and all that bollocks. Do you like the ideas of living with in-laws? So personally, 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 I wouldn't want to live with in-laws. Um, especially, be especially because I've moved out myself. I've moved out for uni, so I know how it's like living on my own. I'm just doing my own thing if you know me then you know that i'm a very independent person i like doing things for myself and blah de blah de blah you know the drill um so there's nothing wrong with living in, in with in-laws obviously like if i get along with my in-laws then i don't mind living with my in-laws but preferably i'd want to live on my own like in my own place I don't mind living with my in-laws for like six to six months to a year but then i'd want to move out um obviously if you do talk about moving out would want to eventually move out inshallah um to my own place but like i said it just depends on the whole situation if i like living with my in-laws then i don't mind but i think with girls a lot of girls we want our own place we want our own space we want our own privacy you don't even need to have a bad relationship with your in-laws to even want your own place it is one of my main things but it's something that i can also sacrifice as well just depends how much I like you. Well, I must like you if I'm gonna marry you, but you know. And I feel like a lot of the times when you get married into a family, um, the husband doesn't really know what you're actually going through because they've not moved out. They don't know how it's like to move to a whole other, if you're obviously in another city. 
in a whole other city or a whole different household they don't they i don't think they'll ever understand how that feels purely because they've never experienced it the way we would experience it i think with guys they need to be a lot more open-minded when it comes to things like that what's so important is literally if you're talking to someone and you're at the beginning stages definitely speak to them about their opinions and like what they want think about things like would you want your own place and stuff like that just so that you, you just know what they want and what you want and it's not going to clash in the future that's very very important oh i think i put way too much on make sure you talk about important important things like that even if it is too early because you'd rather know at the beginning than in the middle or at the end where it's literally you're deep in it and you've got feelings for a person and now you're struggling like oh yeah like what should i do they want this but i don't want that and blah blah, blah. it just makes it so much more harder in the decision that you make whereas at the beginning you don't really know the person you have no emotional attachments to them if you find like find things out like that at the beginning then it's more easier to like let them go don't ever um jump into things as well in this day and age we're literally seeing couples left right center on tiktok people getting married and it just makes you really impatient to want to get married and as mentioned before whatever's meant to be will be just let the course run it let the course run what's that saying i don't remember let it flow whatever happens happens i haven't blended out my nose contour yet i'm gonna do it after this i think i'm just trying to concentrate on myself right now concentrate on myself get myself sorted like strengthen my man just work on myself and build myself really and then obviously the right person will come at the right time the next question is do you think there's an age for marriage definitely not there is definitely not an age especially in like the asian community everyone thinks that everyone needs to get married at from between 20 and 24 no you don't you honestly don't need to someone came to my house one day and she was like oh there's this woman and she hasn't she's not even married yet and this and that i go yeah well it's not her time to be married so she doesn't need to be married whatever allah wills to happen will happen and if that means her getting married a bit more later than everyone else then I mean that's what's written for her and i just hate people who think like that if someone gets married at 18 20 25 30 like it's their choice to get married at whatever age you can't rush that process because at the end of the day you're literally signing your life away to someone for the rest of your life it's not a process to rush it's not a process to jump straight into even if that means getting married at like 29 or 30 then it's so be it I don't understand i really don't understand you don't need to be young to get married like just get married whenever you think is ready because you don't want to get into a marriage which ends in divorce purely because you wasn't ready in the first place or you got rushed into it or you just did it to make your parents happy and all this and that and especially if you have kids in the middle of it, it just messes everything up and it's very very damaging to like an individual's mental health whether that being the mom the dad the kids it's not something to be taken lightly because there will be a lot of collateral damage which is why i just feel like everyone needs to stay out of everyone's business if someone wants to get married late let them so this is actually a good question did you um struggle in high school with hijab slash bullying etc in high school i didn't go through bullying i went through bullying more in primary school but not in primary school like just outside of primary like outside of school struggling with hijab i i didn't struggle as much as some people do alhamdulillah i don't know because i've been like my parents made me wear it when i was younger um like it started off on and off and then and then i slowly just started wearing it like more regularly and all of that and because i wore it so often it kind of just 
it was just stuck on my head at that point but i do think it gets hard when you see like girls like when they're wearing the hijab and then they take it off and they look so nice like it is very tempting to take the hijab off purely because like you just get you tend to do get influenced by other people when you are younger but alhamdulillah like i've always kept it on and i can't see myself without the hijab like it's literally my identity like you will never ever see me taking this off inshallah i feel like especially these days a lot of not a lot but some influencers are taking the hijab off there was a big influencer that took hers off i'm not going to mention any names and he was like like you, i knew of her because of her hijab and now that she's took it off it's like a, a loss of identity do you know what i mean and do you know what everyone goes through their struggles i'm not here to judge obviously if you don't if you're not i can't say if you're not ready to wear the hijab don't wear it because at the end of the day wearing hijab is a fard and it's just people's choices i can't argue with people's choices there's only so much you can do which is obviously advice at the end of the day everyone's everyone makes their own choice um but yeah anyways i don't see myself ever taking my hijab off um alhamdulillah i've grown very 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 comfortable in my hijab and even like my confidence in my hijab um i just i know for a fact if i ever took it off i'll just feel so uncomfortable without it i wouldn't say it was a massive struggle for me wearing the hijab in high school but um there was some struggle here and there one thing i absolutely hate about when it comes to like people who wear a hijab and don't wear a hijab is the respect level that each of them get i've seen this a lot especially when it comes to guys they see a girl that doesn't wear a hijab the respect that they give to them is a bit more different to a girl that does wear a hijab and I just think that that is so wrong because at the end of the day, anyone can wear a hijab. The hijab doesn't actually show how much of a good Muslim you are because I'm sure mo a lot of you have heard this like, someone wearing a hijab can might not even pray the salah, might not even give zakat, read Quran, etc. Whereas someone who doesn't wear a hijab might do all of the following things. You just never know. I just find it so disrespectful and so rude and so undermining when guys or just people in general don't show as much respect to people who don't wear a hijab as they would to people who wear a hijab because it happens like with me and my friends like my friends don't wear a hijab whereas i do and it's like i just it just really frustrates me when people don't treat you the same and another thing that annoys me as well is when people have so much expectations purely because you wear a hijab as well now that is a completely another topic that i could get into but i'm not gonna get into because it is long and um i don't want to make this video too long. so i'm gonna just finish off this video with some uni questions because i got quite a bit of uni questions so I do, for those that don't know, I do child nursing. Um, I'm in my third year now, alhamdulillah, just my last year and then I'll be done. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut it short because, oh my gosh, um, I've run out of stories. So I'm gonna quickly do my lips and then come back and just explain finish up so this is the end of the video unfortunately i did have some more questions as well but if you guys want to see more videos like this like q a topic talk through kind of video then do let me know i will try and film some more but other than that this is the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one